Conor McGregor hasn't been fighting, but he's been in the news a lot the past couple of years, mostly for being an ultra entertaining train wreck that always found himself in some type of tomfoolery. Some of these situations were funny, some concerning, and some not funny at all, but what he's been in the news for this past week has definitely been the darkest thing that his name has ever been connected to. And for those that have been living under a rock, Conor has been found liable of raping a woman named Nikita Hand in a civil court case. And in this video, I'll give you the details of the case, the fall out and why I feel this has the potential to ruin Conor McGregor's career entirely. And I feel like it's important to explore both sides of the case, so let's start with the side of the prosecution. According to Nikita, Conor and his friend James Lawrence took her and her friend to a Dublin hotel on December 9th of 2018. After mutually doing cocaine that was provided by Conor, she claims that Conor began to act more and more aggressive and inappropriate towards her. This culminated in a brutal rape where at one point he allegedly put her in a chokehold and told her, quote, now you know how I feel, referencing his fight against Habib Nurmagomedov a couple of months prior. Now this part might sound totally far-fetched and unbelievable, but remember, cocaine abuse does really weird things to people. Just imagine that the guy that said that is also the guy that made this video. After the alleged encounter, she filed a report with police, at which point pictures of her injuries were taken and by all accounts, they are very brutal. So brutal that in leaked messages between the Irish press, they were saying that whoever was responsible for this was going away for a very long time. One of the more gruesome details released to the public was that her tampon was lodged inside of her and had to be removed by the examiner. But even with the injuries, police decided that there was not enough evidence for a criminal case, likely due to eyewitness testimony that I'll discuss in a bit. And at that point, Nikita was advised to file a civil case, which kept being deferred until now. And from the outside looking in, there are a couple of key things that seem to give a lot of credibility to what she's saying. First of all, the fact that she never wanted to file a civil case and initially wanted to press criminal charges, which shows that she wasn't necessarily looking for a payout. So whatever the objective truth is, it seems likely that she either believed that she was assaulted or wanted to bring as much harm to Connor as possible for whatever reason. Furthermore, in June of 2024, her house was broken into and her boyfriend was stabbed trying to keep the assailants away. And while initially this might seem like a robbery gone wrong, Nikita's lawyer attempted to frame it as witness intimidation. And in the weird parallel, a 40-year-old Irish woman who had accused Connor of assault in Ibiza had her car set on fire. And she also claimed that it was an attempt at intimidation. And while neither of these incidents were proven to be true or tied back to Connor, it is a weird coincidence especially considering Connor's well-publicized connection to the Kinahan cartel, with one of his sisters even dating a member in Graham the Wig Whalen. Now let's take a look at Connor's side of this. He confirms having a consensual encounter with Nikita, but denies participating in any kind of an assault, having no idea where the brutal injuries came from. Furthermore, his friend James Lawrence also claimed to have a consensual encounter with her as well, a fact that she initially claimed to not remember, but then proceeded to accuse him of assault as well. And James and Nikita Nikita's own friend that was also present both claimed that sex between her and Connor was fully consensual and she did not have the injuries that she later presented to the police. And even though he ended up losing in court, there are several pieces of evidence that make Connor's side of the story very believable as well. First of all, Nikita's claim of Connor pursuing her is immediately put into doubt as she was the one that reached out to him with a suggestive DM over Instagram. And it might also be contextually relevant to keep in mind that she also had a young child and a boyfriend at the time with whom she was planning to buy a house. But she was also on the least cordial, but more than likely friendly terms with Connor's fiance, Dee Devlin. On top of that, she was on a three-day bender, and this was only a part of what she did within that time frame. Finally, and this is the part that gives the most credence to Connor's side of the story, is that while she claimed to be disgusted by Connor and physically unattracted to James Lawrence, unbeknownst to her, she was recorded on CCTV footage being very physically affectionate towards both of them before and after the alleged assault. 
assault. Ultimately, the jury exonerated James Lawrence, but found Connor liable, forcing him to pay around 250,000 euro. And then now deleted right up, he condemned Nikita, essentially calling her a liar, but interestingly, so did his fiance D, saying, quote, my sons will be warned, women like you exist. But regardless, the fallout for Connor thus far has been horrible. The Hitman video game dropped his likeness, and he was removed as the face of Proper 12. And that might be due to the fact that there are a multitude of accusations against Connor for very similar things. And as we saw with Diddy, Weinstein, Vince McMahon, and even R. Kelly, who got away with it in the early 2000s, but was taken down in a much more sensitive time 20 years later, once the floodgates open up, it's over. At one time, all of these people were loved, admired, and respected much more than Connor currently is, and then proceeded to lose it all seemingly overnight. And with the way those cases played out, I'd say that the book deals and the Netflix documentaries exposing the dark truth behind Connor McGregor are not far behind at all. In fact, we'll probably start seeing them as early as 2025. So if I had to make a guess, I'd say that this could very well be the beginning of the end for Connor McGregor. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like the video if you liked it. And if you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell next to it. And if you want to support the channel further and get access to perks like highlighted comments and early access to videos, become a member by hitting the join button if you're on Android or desktop or the link in the description if you're on iOS. Why did Nikita have to fight alone? Why, did, why was Nikita abandoned by the Irish justice system? It's not fair. And I just think, I, I just think it's, um, sorry, um, it's really, this really, really hits home for me. It's like a kick in the guts.